revelation, prophecy, dreams and visions, these are interesting subjects that capture the imagination of many. Paranormal experiences have become a fascination for many around the world in almost every culture. Tarot cards, astrology, psychics, witches and mediums hawk their services and masses flock to their offer of knowledge and insight, understanding and wisdom. What drives this hunger? What draws us to long for things unseen, to be involved in something bigger than ourselves, to trifle with powers that are out of our control? God promised that in the last days He would pour out His Spirit and that supernatural experiences would abound, experiences like dreams, visions, and prophecy, occurrences like signs, wonders, and miracles. But these have a purpose in God's plan. They're intended to lead people to something. God's intention is that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Supernatural activity is intended to draw us into relationship with the supernatural God. Relationship. According to Oxford Dictionary, relationship is defined as the way that two things are connected. Supernatural activity was never intended for our entertainment. It was very purposeful. Its purpose was to strengthen our connection to God. From the very beginning, God has reached out to mankind to foster relationship with them. He walked with Adam and Eve in the garden, speaking to them and revealing His plan for them, helping them to walk out the purpose He created them for, to expand the reach of the garden until the whole world was one with paradise. Even after the fall, when Adam and Eve had sinned, God's intention had not changed. He knew exactly what had happened. He knew what they had done, and yet He came like every other day to walk through the garden with His friends and to talk with them. God is still releasing supernatural activity today to people that walk with Him and people that don't yet. He is pursuing relationship, and relationship requires communication. This is the mystery of intimacy with God. Dreams and Mysteries. The strength of every relationship can be seen by the level of communication within it. Experts can observe the way two people talk to each other and predict how long that relationship will last. Communication is the key to starting a friendship, nourishing companionship, and developing intimacy. Think about the different types of relationships we have. With strangers, there's little to no relationship. There's not a connection. We barely speak to them. Depending on your culture, the interaction is different, but the result is the same. If someone's walking down the street and passes a stranger, there's often little interaction. If you're in a large metropolis, you may not even acknowledge they're there. Most often, we keep our head down and accomplish whatever the task is that's in front of us, getting to work, going to a meeting, finding our destination, or returning home. In a smaller city or a different culture, you might nod in their direction, even make eye contact. If you grew up in a more rural area, you might be tempted to wave or even say hello. If you're introverted in private or extroverted in social, either way, you won't often start a deep conversation there will likely be little self-disclosure. What would change this? Need, desperation. If someone was being robbed, they would cry out to anyone in the vicinity. When someone is hurt, in an accident, or distressed, our interactions change. One would not often start with personal information, but we'd ask for the help we need. Call the police, get an ambulance, stop that thief. Another level of relationship is that of acquaintances. Imagine you're at a social gathering and you only know a couple people. Crowd of people, and maybe you have some connection. You're all in the same place. You know the same person. You work at the same place. There's similar passion or interest, and you've got some time to talk. 
We have a phrase to describe the conversations at this level. Small talk. What's the weather? You like the hors d'oeuvres? Oh, that was a nice show. Uh, how did you meet Joe? We call it small talk because its intention is not deep conversation, but to show the other person we're nice or friendly, to minimize an awkward silence or to engage socially. The discussion will center around things and situations, maybe news, current events. It'd be offensive, just weird, if you started telling someone that you met at a party that you're having financial difficulties or, or there's problems in your marriage. Now, when it comes to coworkers and neighbors, there's a lot more that you'd share. You'd probably know their name, if they're married, what their spouse's name is, maybe how many children they have, if they're new to the area. Most often, conversations will revolve around shared experiences like, can you believe that storm we had last night? Have you met the Martinez's that moved in down the street? As time goes on, you may find out that they love film noir or Renaissance art, that they're interested in Caribbean spices or extreme sports. You're starting to know them. Connection is growing, and in that connection, there's an affinity, an affection, a respect. This is the start of friendship. And with friends, the conversation evolves again. There's a shift. It progresses from discussing things, other people and situations, to sharing our passions and dislikes. We, we advance from outer things to inner things. What's going on in our hearts? We begin to discuss what we could easily keep hidden if we didn't trust the other person, but we choose to share because we trust them. Trust. That's the key to relationship. And relationship is the key to trust. Trust builds because we know the other person and are able to develop an expectation of how they will respond to certain circumstances. It grows because we recognize an affinity. There are similarities even in the midst of our differences. There's one other thing that fosters trust and also leads to a deeper level of connection. Commitment. It could be unsaid or it could be clarified. It may be assumed or it could be a written agreement. At the highest level, it's a mutual promise and agreement that defines the expectations and the type of relationship that two people have. Marriage is the most recognized relationship covenant. There's a promise between two people of exclusivity and devotion. It comes with benefits, but it also defines limits. In the context of real commitment and ongoing relationship, communication changes. There are no longer any off-limit signs on areas of the heart. We share our deepest fears and our greatest hopes, our dreams, our heart is open. They know us more than anyone else, and we know them. Relationship, communication, inseparable concepts. Relationship defines and sustains the conversation to be expected and the conversation deepens and exhibits the health of the relationship. To be in a relationship, conversation is essential. But what does this have to do with supernatural phenomena? Dreams and Mysteries relies on the gifts of our friends and partners. We want to extend a heartfelt thank you to those that help us provide this quality program. Would you consider partnering with us? Visit streamsministries.com partner or dreamsandmysteries.com to learn more. You can all prophesy, but some are prophets. What is the difference? Join John E. Thomas as we dig deep into the ministry of the prophetic. Practical Prophetic Training is an equipping course designed to help you grow in anointing, character, servanthood, and effectiveness as you press into the Spirit of God for more clarity and impact through revelation. Explore the difference between Old and New Testament prophetic ministry, the path of growth God takes someone on to expand their sphere of authority, how the prophetic office interacts with apostles, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, and learn many of the ways the prophetic functions Visit streamsministries.com slash classroom today or call 1-800-538-5285 to catapult your discipleship to the next level. 
Do you desire to go deeper in prayer? Would you like your scripture reading to become an adventure of discovery? As you unearth the ancient practices John Paul Jackson and John E. Thomas share in the Art of Praying the Scriptures collection, your connection with God will deepen and broaden. In the Art of Praying the Scriptures book, teaching set, and study card, you will discover a fresh look at Lectio Divina, divine reading, and learn the benefits that reading and meditating on Scripture can bring to your spiritual life. In Cultivating an Effective Prayer Life, a seminar by John E. Thomas on a USB flash drive, you will find the power of a transformed mind, the freedom of a heart cultivated by God's Word. Take the adventure of prayer to the next level today with the Art of Praying the Scriptures collection, available for your gift of $75 or more. Call 1-800-538-5285 or visit dreamsandmysteries.com. Each of these types of relationships are pictures of the relationships people have with God. When it comes to interacting with the divine, people are in various positions. Some are strangers. They're just going about their life, content to keep walking, continue moving, carry on towards the destination they've chosen for themselves. Perhaps it is a safe home, a place that they can retreat to in the midst of the craziness of life. For others, it is a loving family, the feeling of belonging, being rooted and accepted, maybe even the feeling of being needed. It could be accomplishment, a position of influence and power, the accumulation of wealth and possessions. Maybe the destination they imagine is just shelter from the loneliness. Maybe it's the experience of pleasure or escape from the monotony of everyday life. Busy in the pursuit of a goal, they move through life not acknowledging the God who is there, giving them a dream, speaking to their heart, warning them of trouble, or saving them from pitfalls. When the facade of sufficiency falls away, cries for help come. They begin reaching out to anyone, anything that is close. When life falls apart, everyone prays. This is a relationship strangers have with God. They just go about life until something goes wrong. They feel they don't need God until they need someone to bail them out of their situation. For others, God is an acquaintance. Perhaps they grew up in church or in a setting where it was normal to go to church or to say that one is religious. I, I know God. I remember the stories from Sunday school. I like Jesus. If someone asked, we would say that we're Christian, but not very religious. I faithfully go to church every Easter and Christmas. I'm not sure what it all means, but that's okay. I'm a good person. There are levels of acquaintances. Some we see once a year or rarely. Some we see all the time. A close acquaintance with God is someone who attends church regularly. They pray over their meals, enjoy the idea of going to heaven when they die. When they happen to be in God's presence, they say hello and are nice, but then go about the day and not aware of Him being near. God is not on their mind unless circumstances or other people bring Him up. Life goes on, and while there is an acknowledgement of a spiritual reality, the experience of it is anemic. But maybe our connection is a little closer. We live in the same neighborhood as God. We thank Him for meals, text Him regularly with nice devotionals or Bible reading talk about the weather and special occasions, we would consider him a friend. We can explain to someone a few of his likes and dislikes. We've heard the story and can accurately describe him when asked. But I have to ask, do we know his heart? How often do we share our fears and dreams, our hopes and anxieties, our passions and pet peeves? Do we only call on him when we need something? Do we only hear him talking when he's telling us what to do? Is it a relationship of the head or a relationship of the heart? Perhaps it is truly a relationship of the heart. We're passionate about God. We know how much he's delivered us from and gratefulness marks our thoughts of him. Maybe our relationship with him is interactive and growing. This is the goal. Communication is dialogue. 
It's two-sided. Both parties play a part to ensure healthy interaction. God desires a much deeper relationship than many of us are ready for. He's moved in our direction. He is talking. He's giving dreams, releasing visions, dispatching messages, changing situations, and causing divine coincidences all the time. When Peter quoted Joel's prophecy, it started with the statement, In the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. All flesh. Not some. All. As he continues, he begins to focus on those he has relationship with. Your sons and daughters, your young men, your old men, and then my servants. God is speaking to everyone, but the level of relationship we have with him will determine how we hear him. He's pursuing everyone. He's speaking to everyone, but as with all relationships, the level of trust and intimacy will affect the level of self-revelation. How much I tell you about my heart is based on our history, our commitment to each other, how much you share with me. God's not like us, but we are like him. God always takes the initiative. Even when we're not trustworthy, even when we have broken trust, the Apostle Paul tells us that while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. How much more now that we are reconciled shall we be saved by his life? God took the initiative to reach out to us, each and every one of us, so that anyone who would respond to him could come into relationship with him. Maybe you don't have that type of relationship. Perhaps you've had a dream or you knew something that you couldn't have. Perchance you've seen things that other people didn't see. God's reaching out to you. Maybe none of these things have happened to you and you wonder what people are talking about when they discuss them. It's possible they're crazy. It doesn't make sense, but something haunts you in the back of your mind. There must be more. There has to be someone that has put this all together. You have a purpose. There must be a meaning to this all. He is reaching out. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that anyone who puts their trust in him might have eternal life. Anyone. That includes you. And it's easy to respond. Just tell him you want him. God, if you're real, would you make yourself known? I'm sorry for not recognizing that you're here trying to have relationship with me. I want to know you. Save me. Show me the purpose you created me for. I surrender to your love. Speak to me, God. I want to be your friend. See, when Jesus was talking to his disciples, he told them, no longer do I call you servants. For the servant doesn't know what his master is doing, but I've called you friends. For all that I've heard from my Father, I've made known to you. No longer servants, friends. It's about relationship. And notice what he says the meaning of friendship is in his eyes. Communication. I will tell you all that the Father has told me. He doesn't need us to do anything for him. The one that spoke the universe into existence and still holds it all together with that same word that keeps on speaking does not need you and I. But he wants us. He's not looking for robots or slaves. He's looking for friends. In my dream, a woman my husband and I know named Anne came to the door. And she handed me a bouquet of flowers. They were beautiful and completely unexpected. I was stunned. I could not figure out why she had given these to me.
This dream is so much fun. Now, a little background information will help you understand where this interpretation comes from, because the dreamer was trying to figure out whether or not they were supposed to sell their house. They'd been trying to decide if they were supposed to move into a different place or if they were supposed to stay at the same place. And they were asking the Lord, they'd been crying out and praying, what do I do? I wanna make sure that I make the right decision. They were very concerned about making the right decision that they didn't make a mistake. And so God comes and he gives them this dream where, where their friend, whose name happens to be Anne, comes to them bringing flowers to their front door in the very house that they're thinking about selling. Now, Anne, very interesting. In this dream, the meaning of the name is what's important to understand Anne. The name Anne actually means grace. And so what God is saying is that there's grace for you that's coming to your door. Anne is bringing flowers. Flowers will represent the presence of the Lord, the fragrance of the Lord. And so what God is saying in this dream to this dreamer is that you have the grace to make this decision. My presence is with you. Too many times we want dreams to mean something that they don't. We want a yes or a no. Do I do this or do I not? But this dream is actually revealing to the dreamer the level of relationship that they have with God. God is not thinking of them as a slave. He's not telling them what to do. He's letting them know that he's gonna be with them and they can make the decision and he will be with them whatever they decide. God has concealed messages in the dreams we dream and as we search them out, we learn more about his ways. Decades of study and thousands of dream interpretations gave John Paul Jackson a unique perspective on understanding dreams. With the Beginner's Dream Kit, you'll be taught to recognize the 20 most common dreams and what they are saying. This kit includes the Top 20 Dreams book, John Paul's two CD set teaching the basics of dreams and visions, the Moments with God Dream Journal, and two dream cards to help you understand your dreams. For your gift of $60 or more, we will send you these important tools designed to start your journey towards a greater understanding of the dreams you dream. Order your Beginner's Dream Kit today. Visit dreamsandmysteries.com or call 1-800-538-5285. Growing in the prophetic is a lifetime pursuit, and we can receive much wisdom from those that have been on this journey. In the Growing in the Prophetic series, you will hear John Paul Jackson share practical wisdom regarding prophetic ministry and the difference between prophets and psychics. You will also hear John E. Thomas share how your relationship to your earthly father affects how you hear from God. In the Growing in the Prophetic series, you will be equipped with Father is Love an audio CD from John E. Thomas, and audio teachings by John Paul Jackson, Developing Your Prophetic Gift, Wisdom and the Prophetic Journey, and Prophets and Psychics. You'll also receive two study cards, tips for giving a prophetic word and tips for receiving a prophetic word. For your gift of $75 or more, we will send you all six of these life-changing resources. Visit us online at dreamsandmysteries.com or call 1-800-538-5285. Relationship is all about communication. The God that we serve calls himself the Word. You get the idea he likes to talk? From the beginning, he has longed for intimate relationship with his people. He walked with Adam and Eve in the garden. He reached out to Cain, talking to him, trying to help him make a different choice. He enjoyed his discussions with Enoch so much that he just took him up into heaven to be with him. He spoke with Noah and revealed his plan to save humanity. He chose Abraham, his friend, and made astounding promises to him. He actually came down in a body with a couple angels, sat down and ate a meal with Abraham. I want to do that with God. And then he took a walk with him so that he could share his heart. We could continue. Moses spoke with God face to face. Samuel met with him where the Ark of the Covenant was. David spent so much time with God that he captured God's heart. 
He pursued him so much that he was defined as a man who was after God's heart. Elijah, Elisha, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, Zechariah, and so many more. God is a God who speaks, and his desire is relationship. No longer do I call you servants, Jesus said, but I've called you friends. He wants to spend time with us, and he wants us to spend time with him. He wants us to talk to him, and he will hear. He wants to talk to us, and we will hear. There is a hunger growing in the world for supernatural encounters, a desire for something bigger than us, a longing for the unseen. It is a hunger that God put in our hearts. And as one who responded to that longing once said, you have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it finds its rest in you. The hunger we have will only be answered by going deeper with God, deeper in relationship, which means deeper communication. The question is, are you willing to go deeper? God's longing is for us to go further, to trust Him more, to know Him more. He has extended the invitation. Will we say yes? Remember the deepest level of relationship, covenant, marriage, the deepest connection two people can have? That type of relationship can only thrive in the context of commitment. This has been God's plan from the beginning. Remember in the garden, God put Adam to sleep. He took a rib from his side and formed Eve, brought her to him, and Adam responded, this one at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Therefore, man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. That's how the story starts. And when Jesus came, there was a hole that was put in his side. Blood and water flowed out, and from that sacrifice, God birthed the church, the body of believers worldwide that are in relationship with him. And at the end of the story, Jesus and the bride come together in a wedding feast, bone of his bones and flesh of his flesh. You and I were created for intimacy, for union with God. Paul understood this. When writing about how a husband and wife should connect, he quotes Genesis, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. He continues, this mystery is profound. And I'm saying that it refers to Christ and the church. God's intention is for every marriage that it would point towards the depth of connection that he desires to have with every person. You and I were created for relationship, and that type of relationship, that marriage type of relationship between us and God, well, that's a mystery for another time. But for now, I pray for you, that you would know his heart, that you would respond to his desire for relationship, you would respond to his desire for commitment, and that you would deepen your commitment to him because he is longing for more. He's longing for you.